What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Moving on with quadratics. In this section, we're going to talk about the discriminant. So the way I'm going to organize this video is I'm going to first describe what the discriminant is, the different cases that it could take, and I'm going to do a couple of examples. Now, the discriminant comes from the quadratic formula. And if you remember, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this formula here gives us the solution to any quadratic equation. It also gives us the x-intercepts, right? The solution to a quadratic equation is the same as the zeros or the x-intercepts of that quadratic function that is here. So the discriminant is basically this part of the quadratic formula. So the discriminant, I'm going to label it as capital D, is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And what this tells us is the number of x-intercepts Uh, quadratic will have, right? Or the number of zeros or the number of solutions that a quadratic equation will have. And there's basically going to be three cases. So the discriminant can either be greater than zero. So that's the first case. And if the discriminant is greater than zero, what's going to happen? Well, that means that there's going to be two x intercepts, right? Because when you square root this, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, when you square root this, there's going to be two solutions. So there's going to be plus or minus here, right? And so you're going to get two solutions for x. So there's going to be two x intercepts. And the way that looks on a diagram, some examples, is maybe a quadratic that looks like that, two x-intercepts, or maybe a quadratic that looks like that. And these can be shifted over, stretch, compress. But it's basically a quadratic that's going to have two x-intercepts. Right? So that's the case when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. Now, what if the discriminant is equal to zero? That's another case. What's going to happen then? Well, then there's only going to be one x-intercept. And basically, the x-intercept is going to be the vertex of the parabola. So the way that's going to look, a couple of examples is maybe something like that or something like that. Right? Because if you think about it, if this part, b squared minus 4ac, is 0, square root is 0, there's just one solution. It's only 0. So plus or minus 0, basically, there's only going to be one solution. And actually, the x-intercept is going to be negative b over 2a, because this part's going to be 0. So plus or minus 0, that can go away. You're just left with negative b over 2a. So if the discriminant is 0, there's only one x-intercept, and it's equal to that. And then, the last case, if the discriminant is less than zero. And when that happens, there's going to be no x-intercepts. So how that would look like is maybe a quadratic like that, or like this. Notice it's never going to be crossing that x-axis. And that makes sense because if the discriminant is less than zero, b squared minus 4ac is negative. You can't square root a negative. So you would get no solutions, meaning there are no x-intercepts. So that there is the discriminant. And these are the three different cases for the discriminant. Could be greater than zero, then there's two x-intercepts, equal to zero, one x-intercept, less than zero, there's no 
x-intercepts. So now knowing what the discriminant is, let's do some examples. So we're asked, how many zeros does each quadratic have, these three quadratics? And notice they're asking you how many zeros does each quadratic have, not what are the zeros. If they were asking what are the zeros, we'd have to factor or we would have to throw it in a quadratic formula. But they're just asking how many zeros does each, each quadratic have. And because they're asking how many, we can just use the discriminant. So we know the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. So this first quadratic, what is the a value? The a value is negative 2. The b value, negative 16. The c value is negative uh, 33. Right, so we could throw these in here. So we'd have the discriminant is b squared, so negative 16 squared minus four times the a value of negative two times the c value of negative 33. So negative 16 squared, that would give us 256. And then here, negative four times negative two is eight. 8 times negative 33 gives us negative 264. So 256 minus 264, that gives us negative 8. So the discriminant is less than 0. So what does that mean? This quadratic here has no x intercepts. When the discriminant is less than 0, there are no x-intercepts. Another cool way to actually show this, um, let me erase this here, is we could take this um, quadratic and we can find the vertex of it. So we could complete the square. So we take out a negative two from the first two, so we have x squared plus 8x, this would be minus 33. Negative two, x squared plus 8x. Half of eight is four, squared is 16. So we do plus 16, minus 16, minus 33. Negative two, x squared plus 8x plus 16. Take out the negative 16, negative two times negative 16 is positive 32. Then we'd have minus 33 there. So this factors into x plus 4. That's a perfect square trinomial. 32 minus 33 is negative 1. So took this quadratic, converted it to vertex form, negative 2, x plus 4, minus 1. So what's the vertex here? The vertex is negative 4, negative 1. So if we plot that, Negative 4, negative 1 is about here. And notice that this parabola is opening down. The a value is negative. So it's going to be opening down like that. So it makes sense that we have a negative value for the discriminant getting no x-intercepts because we could show that with vertex form, right? This parabola is opening down and its vertex is below the x-axis. So there's no way that it's going to be crossing that x-axis. Right? So that's another way to show that this quadratic has no x-intercepts. Okay, moving on to number two. Um, we got y equals negative x squared plus 12x minus 36. So we know that the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So the a value is negative 1, b value is 12, c value is negative 36. So we'd have 12 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 36. This would be 144. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 times negative 36 gives us negative 144 discriminant is equal to zero. And when the discriminant is equal to zero, that means that there is one x intercept.
if you look at the cases that we went over at the beginning of this video. Right, so there's one x-intercept. If you want to show that another way, this actually factors um, into, uh, if we take out a negative, we'd have x squared minus 12x plus 36. This factors into x minus 6 squared, like that. There's like a plus 0 here. So the vertex is 6 and 0. Right, which is one x-intercept. Remember when I told you if there's one x-intercept, then the vertex is that x-intercept. And you could tell here it's six and zero, and it's opening down. Right, so multiple ways to show this, but basically there is one x-intercept because that discriminant was equal to zero. And then, Third case, we got y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 13. So a value is 2, b value is negative 12, c value is um, 13. So discriminant is b squared, so negative 12 squared minus 4 times 2 times a times the c value of 13. So this would be 144. This would be negative uh, 8 times 13, which would give us what? Negative 104, right? 8 times 13 is 104. So 144 minus 104 is uh, 40, which is greater than 0, which means there are 2 x-intercepts. So there's two x-intercepts for the third quadratic. And if you want to show that visually, we can complete the square on this. So um, convert it to vertex form. Uh, Half of negative 6 is negative 3, squared is 9. So we do plus 9, minus 9, this would be plus 13. So negative 9 times 2 is negative 18, plus 13. This would be 2x minus 3 squared. Negative 18 plus 13 gives us negative 5. So where's this vertex happening at? 3 and negative 5. So if we plot that, 3 and negative 5 is like down here. And this parabola is opening up. The a value is positive. So it has to go through that x-axis at least twice. Now this is perhaps not the correct diagram. Maybe this x-intercept is going to be over here not to scale, but the point is the x-intercept is below, or the uh, vertex is below the x-axis and this parabola is opening up. So it's gonna have to cross that x-axis at two points. Hence why there are two x-intercepts for that quadratic.